You're listening to Tim Bolkley's 5-Minute Bible. So, this time, I want to tell you how Jesus gives us the key to understanding casuistic law in the Old Testament. Or at least, gives us the key to how we should understand casuistic law in the Old Testament, which, as any scholar will tell you, is not quite the same thing, and which, as any preacher will tell you, is much more important. The key passage, of course, is one we looked at before. Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17 and following. There, at least if you're the usual kind of literalist, Jesus seems to cut the ground out from under our feet by telling us that we have to understand it straight. Don't think, he says, I've come to abolish the law of the prophets. I've come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. There you are. Every letter of every casuistic law in the Old Testament stands till the end of time, says Jesus. Now, most of us, unless we are extremely observant Jews, aren't keeping every letter of every casuistic law of the Old Testament. Some of them just don't apply to us anymore, and some of them we just plain break. There are laws that say you shouldn't wear clothing of two different kinds of cloth. I'm wearing a polycotton t-shirt as I talk to you. That's one law broken. There are laws which tell you you shouldn't eat shellfish. I enjoy my prawn curry. Another law broken. But is that what Jesus meant? Look a bit further on in chapter 5. Verse 20. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. It's not enough to equal their righteousness. We have to exceed it. Now, the Pharisaic scribes were extremely careful about keeping all these laws, and they even very carefully put fences around the casuistic laws so as not to break them by accident. So, if the casuistic law says, you shall not exceed 50 kilometres an hour in a built-up zone, if you do, then you will get demerit points on your licence. Then the Pharisee says, OK, to make sure I don't exceed 50 kilometres an hour in the built-up zone, I'll put a fence around it. I'll act as if the law said, you shall not exceed 40 kilometres an hour in the built-up zone. And then, though all the other drivers will get absolutely annoyed with me, I won't break the 50k limit. That's how Phariseeism works. By scrupulously keeping the rules, or by creatively finding loopholes to the rules. It takes casuistic laws, and it puts fences round them to protect them. So that we don't break them, but keep them. How can you exceed that kind of righteousness? Surely, you either break a law or you keep it. How can you exceed keeping it? But that's what Jesus says we have to do in verse 20. Well, look at what he says in verse 21. You've heard that it was said to those of ancient times, You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. Okay, Jesus is quoting casuistic law from the Old Testament. Let's see what he does with it. Verse 22. But I say to you that if you're angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. Now, that's excessive. That's exceeding the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. The Pharisaic scribes say, OK, the law says no murdering. So we'll put a fence round it. You should try to avoid even killing by accident. Or maybe you should be a pacifist or something. Jesus says, don't get angry, don't insult, don't feel superior. That's excessive. Jesus is doing one of two things. He's either making these laws excessive, exceeding them in that sense, or possibly he's turning them from casuistic laws, sets of rules to be obeyed, about which we can ask questions, and for which we can try to find loopholes, into apodictic commands, that is, targets to aim at. Instead of the rule, no murdering, the apodictic command Here's a target you should aim at. You should be the sort of person who doesn't murder. What sort of person doesn't murder? A person who doesn't get angry. A person who doesn't trade insults. A person who doesn't feel superior. So, instead of the casuistic law, no murdering, about which we can ask questions like, well, is accidental killing okay? And is killing in time of warfare okay? And the rest of those questions that you're all familiar with, we get an apodictic command. Be the sort of person who is not a murderer. Don't be angry. Don't trade insults. Don't feel superior. 
That all sounds wonderful and nice, but am I right? Or is that not at all what Jesus is saying, and am I just trying to wriggle out of Jesus making these commands excessive? To find out, you'll have to wait for my next podcast in the series. Though I hope it won't be a long wait. Bye for now.